Hello everyone. In this sequence, we'll look at the API for manipulating files. What we'll be looking at particularly is how to navigate between files, how to create and remove files, how to list files in the directories, and how to read from and write to files. To begin with, we need an entry point in the file system. There are many. With File Locator Home, you have the user directory. File Locator Root, you have the root of the directory system. With File Locator C in Windows, you have Disk C. Once you have a directory, these three elements are directories. I take one, File Locator Home, in which I have the user home directory. From there, I can say, give me your access path. So home isn't a string, it's an object that represents the directory. And I can say, give me the string locating you in the system. So that's home slash casu. I can ask a directory where its children are. What are all the files and directories you contain? Here it tells me in home. I have a file named .bashrc, and I have a music directory. So this, children, returns a bundle of objects, which are files and directories. If we play a bit more with this API, we'll see the method slash. When we send the message slash to a directory, we can indicate a particular child that interests us. So, home slash music gives me the music directory. By sending the message directories to a file, I get all the subfiles. Here I see that in my music library, I have a file Anwar Brem. The parent message allows me to go up a rung. So, if I'm in the music file, I send parent, but I return to my home file. Leaving my directory music as we saw before, I'll try to create a directory. To do this, I check if the directory exists. By sending a message is directory, I see whether it exists or not. This says it doesn't exist. All right, I create it with ensure create directory. Then I test it. Do you exist? In this case, it exists. With delete, I can erase it and I check it's deleted by sending is directory. To find all the children in a directory, there are several methods. I'll show you two. We send a message all children matching to a directory and by passing it an expression that's typical of the latter and which represents the name of the directory we expect. So with asterisk.ogg, I want all the files to have the extension ogg. That will return all my music files to ogg in my Pink Floyd directory. I can do the same thing in a more long-winded way. By sending the message all children, I get all the children, all the files and directories in a particular directory. And I filter with the message select all those whose name ends in OGG. Base name returns the string representing the file name. And I want the file name to end in OGG. These two bits of code are almost the same. How do we get information about a file? How do we create a file from a string? I have a file name as file reference, which turns my file name into a reference towards a file. It can be an existing or non-existent file. I don't know. Let's look at the message is file at this reference. I'll get true if it exists and false if it doesn't. By sending the message base name, I get the name of the file. By sending extension, I get the file extension. With size, I get the size. And with path string, as we saw before, I get the access path in the form of a string. Now let's see how to write to and read from a file. To write, 
First of all, I take a reference towards a file. Here, I check that it doesn't exist. We can write to a file that exists. I'm checking it doesn't exist. I write to it. To write, I create a stream. With next put all, I ask to write each character of the stream to the file. At the end, I close my stream to ensure that the system has written everything to the disk. Conversely, I can read from a file, so I take the same file and .txt. I check it exists, and it does, because I can write to it. I create a read stream, and I look either character by character by sending next. With the message next, I'll get H, then E, then L, etc. I do next once, I get H. Afterwards, I'll pick up everything, from the first H I've just read to the end of the file. Here, I get LO world without the H. At the end, I send stream close to the stream object to ensure the file reference is closed. We can write these codes more simply without having the need to send the close message. We might forget to send the close message. There can be an exception that means close is never sent. In general, we try to avoid having to write it ourselves. To do this, to write, I take my file reference. I send the message write stream do, which takes a block in parentheses. The block takes one stream in parentheses. This stream will be automatically provided by write stream do, which will create a write stream on the file. The only thing I need to do is, by using this stream, manipulate the stream to do what I want with the file. I'll write hello world to the file. Stream next put all hello world. When the block finishes, the stream closes automatically, and the file writes to the disk. Same principle for reading. I put read stream do. Here I have a stream, and I can do what I want with it. I decide to retrieve the contents of the stream. What you should know is that files and directories are references. They're references towards files and directories on the disk that may or may not exist. Check with isFile isDirectory if the files exist on the disk. The API is simple and facilities navigation and manipulation of the files. We can read from and write to files through streams and with an API, which will close the stream automatically at the end.